Hey there History Buffs and welcome back to the channel. On this day, the 9th of August 1588, Queen Elizabeth I gave her infamous speech at Tilbury. But how did we get there? The Spanish Armada, also known as the Most Fortunate Fleet, or La Felicima Armada, was an invasion of England by King Philip II of Spain. Former King Consort of England and brother-in-law of Queen Elizabeth I. This grand fleet had about 150 ships and 18,000 men, and at the time was the largest fleet ever seen in Europe. For years, religious and political tensions simmered between Catholic Spain and Protestant England, fueled by conflicting interests and ambitions. Spain, viewing England as a rival in trade and expansion into the lucrative New World of the Americas, eyed its growing power with suspicion. England, in turn, coveted Spain's vast empire and wealth, leading to a series of confrontations between English pirates, privateers, and Spanish vessels. Deliberate targeting of Spanish shipping by English sailors, such as the infamous burning of more than 20 Spanish ships by Sir Francis Drake in Cadiz in April 1587, exasperated hostilities. Meanwhile, attempts by figures like Walter Raleigh to establish English colonies in North America met with repeated failure. However, tensions escalated in 1587 as plans for invasion gained momentum. I just want to say as well that my mum has a go at me all the time for this. I say Walter Raleigh, she says Raleigh. So if you're one of those people, that's just the way I am. The tipping point came with the execution of Mary Queen of Scots, a staunch Catholic and ally of Spain, on the orders of Queen Elizabeth I. This act was the last straw for Philip. The Spanish fleet set sail on the 12th of July 1588 and was spotted off the Lizard in Cornwall on the 19th of July. It was on the 19th of July that Francis Drake was playing his legendary game of bowls on Plymouth Hoe and when he was informed of the sighting he responded that there is plenty of time to finish the game and beat the Spaniards. But of course how much is fact and how much of that is fiction? We just don't know. Elizabeth, who was at Richmond, was informed of the news of the Armada on the 22nd of July. But she didn't panic, much to the admiration of her advisers. Her favourite, Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, gathered 4,000 men on the 26th of July at Tilbury Fort in anticipation of the arrival of the Armada. He also orchestrated a blockade of ships across the Thames. The Spanish were not to get through. Leicester invited the Queen to inspect his troops at Tilbury and the great English weather, which is still prevalent today, did not fail this tiny country. That, coupled with the efforts of the Navy, was enough to overpower the Spanish. And it would be here that she makes her infamous speech. There are no reliable eyewitness accounts of what happened and what was said on the day, but several historians and authors have described the event in a similar vein. She rode through their ranks on a huge white war horse, armed like a queen of antique mythology, in a silver cuirass and silver truncheon. Her gown was white velvet, and there were plumes in her hair like those that waved from the helmets of the mounted soldiers. How accurate this is, we don't know, but I could totally see Lizzie doing this. Then that brings us to the actual speech. There are three versions of this speech. One was recorded in 1612 by William Lee. Another version appears beneath the painting of Elizabeth at Tilbury in St. Faith's Church, Gaywood, and it was commissioned by Thomas Hare. This third version I'm going to share is the most commonly well-known version and is the one that is used today even by England's lionesses. This was recorded by Dr. Lionel Sharp in a letter to the Duke of Buckingham in around 1623. My loving people, we have been persuaded by some that are careful of our safety to take heed 
how we commit ourselves to armed multitudes for fear of treachery. But I assure you, I do not desire to live to distrust my faithful and loving people. Let tyrants fear. I have always so behaved myself that under God, I have placed my chiefest strength and safeguard in the loyal heart and goodwill of my subjects. And therefore, I am come amongst you, as you see at this time, not for my recreation and disport, but being resolved in the midst and heat of the battle, to live and die amongst you all, to lay down for my God and for my kingdom and my people, my honour and my blood, even in the dust. I know I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king, and a king of England too, and think foul scorn that Palmer or Spain or any prince of Europe should dare to invade the borders of my realm, to which rather than any dishonour shall grow by me. I myself will take up arms. I myself will be your general, judge, and rewarder of every one of your virtues in the field. I know already, for your forwardness, you have deserved rewards and crowns. And we do assure you on a word of a prince, they shall be duly paid. In the meantime, my lieutenant general shall be in my stead. Then whom never prince commanded a more noble or worthy subject, not doubting, but by your obedience to my general, by your concord in the camp and your valour in the field, we shall shortly have a famous victory over these enemies of my God, of my kingdom and of my people. Hey, that was fun to do. All three versions share the same theme as I know I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king and a king of England's line. Claire Ridgway has done an amazing article on this on the Tudor Society website, which I will have linked in the description box down below. And this was one of the sources for this video. So please, please, please show her some support and go read her article. And if you want to read some more, including the two other speeches that I have not included in this video, then also go check out her website. The next bit I'm going to read verbatim from horribly famous Elizabeth I and her conquest by Margaret Simpson. The next day, there were rumours that the Spanish were coming and Elizabeth, who was getting a bit carried away with her success, said that she was going to lead her men into battle. Fortunately, it was a false alarm. The Duke of Parma bottled out of invading England and within a week, Elizabeth took a chance and banded her army before they were sh sure the danger had passed. She didn't want to pay the men for a day longer than she really had to. English Catholics did not want a Spanish king ruling them any more than Protestants did. People still remember the terrible days when Philip had been married to Mary Tudor. Elizabeth had planned to address the troops with her now infamous speech while the Spanish Armada was still navigating the English Channel. However, by the time she delivered her words, the Spanish fleet was already on the brink of defeat. Eleven days earlier, English fire ships had attacked the Armada as it awaited a rendezvous with Palmer's army off the coast of France. The blazing ships caused panic amongst the Spanish, leading to further losses and chaos. When Elizabeth spoke her famous words at Tilbury, what remained of the Armada was already retreating struggling around Scotland and Ireland to return to Spain. After the Armada's defeat, the English troops were dismissed as the Queen couldn't afford to pay their wages. In the end, they never saw combat, since bad weather had already decimated much of the Spanish fleet, forcing it to retreat. Interestingly, the iconic line about having the heart and stomach of a king doesn't appear in sources until more than three decades after the event. It was first recorded by a Protestant chaplain who had been at Tilbury, though it certainly sounds like something Elizabeth might have said. Despite the celebrated defeat of the Armada, 
it did not signal the end of the war with Spain. The conflict continued well into the 17th century. Moreover, the Spanish did not view the Armada's failure as a significant setback in their broader strategic aims. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, have a wonderful day. Bye.